Yes guys, what's going on? Welcome to Adam McCola TV. We are back with another video for you guys today. We're keeping it coming here on Adam McCola TV. Not only do we have United Daily Live and all the other strands that are appearing on a daily basis, but we've also got this video coming for you right now. And it's one where we're looking ahead to the future with a little bit of excitement, a little bit of hope, a little bit of confidence. Yes, that's what we're doing. We're looking at the future of Manchester United. We're looking at those players that are in the academy or fighting to come through and burst through into that Manchester United first team and try and take some of those spots that some of our first teamers are maybe calling their own. We've got so much talent at the club coming through the ranks, but what I'm going to do today is compile an 11 of players and 11 of our best young talents that are coming through now of course we've also got the likes of Aaron Wambasaka, Marcus Rashford but I'm not going to mention them in this video we're going to mention the players that aren't maybe household names um, for Manchester United fans or football fans in general and look ahead to the future for Manchester United it could be a good one now obviously a lot of things have to go right for these players not only the the potential and the ability which they clearly have in abundance but they need a little bit of luck the right right opportunity, um, luck with injuries, things like that. And they need to have the right mentality for it. But we know they got the talent. And here is United's potential future 11. So let's get stuck into this 11 then and we're going to start in goal obviously and there's the there's the pitch that's popped up next to my big round potato head. But here we go, we're going to get started anyway and in goal we're going with someone that is probably a little bit more of a household name because he's been in the Premier League for a season. Dean Henderson. Now he is on loan at Sheffield United but he's part of Manchester United's academy and our players that are breaking through and coming into that first team. 22 year old shot stopper, English obviously, 27 Premier League appearances this season um, with 10 clean sheets. He's been doing incredibly well, potentially pushing through for a spot in that England Euro squad as well and I'm sure with it now being pushed on a year, it'll probably be England's number one by that point and that shows you the incredible rise that he is having at the moment. He's constantly getting better, he's building his confidence, he's building his ability is is showing it week in week out at the highest level with the highest pressure now there's been some calls for him to come to Manchester United and come back to Manchester United in the summer now I don't agree with that but what I do agree with is the excitement at this lad's potential and his development goalkeepers develop and become better and, and hit their peak as a little bit later than some players but at 22 years old we've probably still got time for him to have another year a good year on loan at Sheffield United we see how highly they regard him um, how high of a level of football they're playing in the Premier League potentially in Europe I think it makes sense to leave him there but he is one that's going to come back to Old Trafford and eventually challenge David De Gea for that top spot and who knows probably take it. Fullback, we've got Ethan Laird. Now he can play on either side. Now for the sake of this, he's on the right-hand side. He's been included in two Europa League match day squads already, but yet to make his bow for the first team and his chances have been limited a little bit by the fact that he's been injured every now and then. 18 years old, English fullback, play left, play right, highly talented. If he wasn't injured, he probably would have got the opportunity when Brandon Williams got the opportunity at left back because he can play there too. And he's a really, really exciting prospect for Manchester United coming through he's been highly rated um, you look at him how he's coming through as well and he's getting that experience of of meeting up with the Europa League squads training with the first team squad traveling with them a spot in the first team and getting his break is actually within touching distance for him um, and eventually I believe he will make that and he'll, he'll probably go on pre-season with the first team in the summer whenever that is um, and then obviously build up towards being a part of that first team squad next season and who knows challenging Aaron Wambasaka and Luke Shaw and Brandon Williams for their spots. Next up one of the youngest players on this list and it's Tedan Mengi, 17 year old, centre half, English again. Now he's obviously under 18s but he's been breaking into the under 23s this season. He's been a part of the first team squad that travelled to Astana, was an unused substitution and he's been training with the first team this season, getting valuable experience. He signed a pro deal in 2019 and he's been absolutely fantastic for United this year in the FA Youth Cup. We've got to the semi-finals obviously, everything's on hold at the minute but he's been a big, big part of that. He's been getting rave reviews in the FA Youth Cup and that is usually a breeding ground for Manchester United and, and English talent as a whole, you know, 
doing well at that FA Youth Cup level because there's a little bit of pressure there playing at Old Trafford, playing against teams that are travelling with full away allocations and things like that. He's done really well at that level and he's showing composure, bringing the ball out, um, good in the air. He's showing all those abilities there that could become a solid centre-half for the Reds. Now Axel Twanzebe is next up alongside Menge at centre-half, 22-year-old England centre-back like I just said now. Spent last season on loan at Aston Villa, had a great Aston uh, loan move at Aston Aston Villa helping them get promoted and getting valuable experience teaching um, and learning from from John Terry obviously absolute wanker but still a good center half to learn from um, and he's got a massive massive future ahead of him now he was in the match day squad expected to start against Liverpool this year got an injury didn't get that start but I fully expect this lad to be one of four Manchester United center halves next season and pushing on and who knows could he help you know, build a centre-half partnership, an English centre-half partnership with Harry Maguire that could potentially go on at an uh, international level as well. He has the talent to make that happen. Good with the ball at his feet, good with the ball in the air, happy in a three, happy in a two. Um, is a solid, solid player. And that year at Aston Villa, playing in the Championship, rugged football, playing against men every single week, men that are looking to, you know, kill each other for points and kill each other for wins because of how much it means in the championship. That would have been a great year for him. Now, he's had a setback with the injury, but I fully expect him to come back, start rising and playing, pushing his players through that ranks and, and challenging Maguire Bay and Lindelof for their spots. Talking about challenging the first team for their spots, Brandon Williams has been doing that. And in my opinion, he has made Luke Shaw's performances better. And actually, he's probably been better at left back than Luke Shaw has been this season. He can improve at defending, but going forward, he shows that tenacity that we want, that desire to get forward, the driving into the box, winning penalties, helping create goals, even scoring goals on the other occasion as well. And I think Luke Shaw's best performances have come at left centre back. So some may consider Brandon Williams to be our number one choice at left back already but he is in this team 19 year old England fullback coming through at Manchester United and he is our own a fighter as well you love to see that might pick up a yellow card but he's absolutely going to kick lumps out of the opposition winger now that's our defence built. Moving on to the midfield area, James Garner comes straight in, 19-year-old English midfielder. Eye for a pass, eye for a goal. Absolute class as well. He links up great with Angel Gomez at under-23 level. We've seen him get opportunities in the first team in the Europa League and look quality as well. And look assured, looked like it's, you know, he wasn't amazing. He wasn't 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. But he looked like he'd be played for the first team for a long time. Maybe a hair to Carrick's throne. He's got that little bit about him. And he's, he's making a name for himself in that reserve side, in that under 23 side. A lot of people say they'd pay just to go see him alone. That's how good he is. And when you look at some of the talent that's been around him in that team, that is a big, big accolade. He played for the first team in Belgrade and I believe he's got it all as a central midfielder. Um, he'd be happy to sit in a two, in a three. Um, and he's one that I believe will be pushing through into the first team soon. The man alongside him in that midfield, Dylan Levitt, 19-year-old Welsh midfielder, breaking in now. He's a little bit feisty, this one. Already been in the Wales first team squad, which is a massive boost to him and shows you how highly he's regarded by Ryan Giggs. Shows you how highly he's regarded by Nicky Butt and Alligan Solskjaer as well because he played for the first team out there in Belgrade and done really well in the midfield. Alongside Jimmy Garner, he's a clever midfield player, tidy in a possession, aggressive in the challenge, eye for a pass. Again, all-round midfield player, just what you want to see in the team and him pushing through as well. Another British talent coming through. All of these players so far have been British, which I'm sure is great for the home nations in terms of helping them build their teams. Not that we care about that. We will though now spice it up a little bit with a little bit of European flair and that comes from and in the form of Hannibal Medjbury. Manchester United spent big, big money on this fellow when he was 16 years old, bringing him in from Monaco for 10 million euros and he's been described as taking the piss out of first teamers in training. I got to see him out in the Mercedes-Benz Junior um, cup tournament thingy and he looked like an absolute baller in like a five aside six aside format um, he's got tricks in abundance got the eye for a pass the right weight of pass as well he's extremely techy but he's also got a, a football IQ about him he's got a little bit of knowledge about him and you love to see that and he's one that gets you on the edge of your street seat for uh He's one of those players that gets you on the edge of your seat. You know what I mean? As soon as he picks up the ball, you're standing and, ooh, what's Hannibal going to do? He's got a name. He's got the hair. He's got it all there. Um, and he can come in in midfield, in attacking midfield, in one of the wider positions. I genuinely believe he's got 
the ability to play in those roles. Now, Manchester United have absolutely got a diamond on their hands here in the form of Hannibal Medjbury. He's got the name, he's got the hair, he's got a little bit of a price tag on him as well, but he doesn't let that pressure rise him and his performance is coming. Everyone must look up to him and think, bloody hell, they've spent a lot of money on this kid and expect him to turn up every single time. Um, but he is slowly coming through in the Manchester United ranks and who knows if he's already taking the piss out of players in training, he may be showing up in the first team next season. Next up, another player with unbelievable feet and technique. It's Angel Gomez coming in in that number 10 position, central attack in midfield area, 19 years old. English was part of that under-17 side um, that won the World Cup for England, which was a massive, massive feat for him. Um, obviously had a little bit of injuries throughout the tournament, but it did play his part as well. Highly rated talent at Manchester United. He's been linked with moves to the likes of Barcelona and Juventus because his contract situation hasn't been settled yet, but the rumours are he's close to agreeing a deal with United and we'll get pen to paper on that soon. And if that happens, United have got a highly rated English talent on their hands, a local boy as well. He's got links to the club. I think he's like the nephew of Nanny or something like that. And, you know, you look at him, youngest player to represent Manchester United since Duncan Edwards in the first team. Coming on that day for Wayne Rooney against Crystal Palace, you may remember it at Old Trafford just before the Europa League final. Um, and we've not seen enough of him in the first team, but fingers crossed, once he gets that deal signed, Ole Gunnar Stolshar will start to unleash him a little bit more on the first team. Could be the perfect alternative. You know when you want to give Bruno Fernandes a little rest or something like that in, in games. I think he'd be perfect in that role um, and coming off the bench to try and change things and pick pick locks and break things down. I don't think we've got any harm in using him. Yes, he's small in stature, but I think he's got the ability to shine through. In that front three behind the striker, we have got Tahith Chung, recently signed a long-term deal at Manchester United. Has had his few opportunities in the first team this season and hasn't really you know, shone massively, but... He's getting the experience, he's signed his deal, he can now get his head down, work hard, he knows what it takes to be in the first team. And it's a big step up from 23s, where you're taking the piss every week because you're one of the best players. United signed him from Feyenoord, 20 year old Dutch winger, so he's come with a, a lot of hype around him. A lot of hype around him. When he came, it was kind of like when we signed Hannibal Medjbury. The same hype around him. Oh, look at this fella that we've signed. He had the hair, he had the name. You know, it kind of all rang true for him. He was linked with some big moves. Um, Recently, he signed the deal at Manchester United, though, and we've got his foreseeable future here. Now, what can he do? Who knows? He hasn't been great so far, but he's still got time on his hands. He's still only 20 years old. We still need wingers there. We need depth in those wing positions because, you know, we've seen what happens when Marcus Rashford goes out, Daniel James isn't in form. Yes, we may make a signing, but the opportunities will still be there for him and he needs to take them because he will get them. He needs to maybe bulk up a little bit physically, but once he does that and once he matures, he's got the talent and hopefully he develops at United and fulfills that potential. Now, we have to save this position till last, but I kind of feel like we are saving the best till last. And that's Mason Greenwood up top for Manchester United in this future 11. But he's also a big part of Manchester United's current team, scoring 12 goals for the first team this season, Mason Greenwood. A generational talent, the most natural finisher at the club, comfortable on left, right, with his head. He's got it all as a striker. And I still don't even think he's played that well for United, considering he scored 12 goals for the first team already. He absolutely has the world at his feet. World's at his feet. And he's going he's gonna to develop at Manchester United. And that's the exciting thing. We've got Rashford. We've got Martial. We've got all these players coming through that I've just mentioned. But we've got Mason Greenwood at the front of it all. You'd normally be happy with everything that we've got at the minute. Like all, all these young talent. Rashford, Martial. All these other ones coming through. But Mason Greenwood's coming through in the, in the shadow of those players. And I think that's perfect for him. Because he is a generational talent. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that about this boy. I think he knows it and his head seems to be firmly his head seems to be firmly on it. His feet are firmly on the ground. I was about to say his head's firmly on the ground. Hopefully not. But it seems to be clicking for him up there. And if it clicks for him on the pitch, he has a little bit more luck and he applies his talent like he is and continues to develop. He will without doubt become one of Manchester United's mainstays in that front three. No doubt about it. Martial Rashford. You know, Jade and Sancho, they have to be wary of their spots if they're here next season because Mason Greenwood's coming through. 12 goals for the first team already. And without doubt, the front line, the focal point of that future Manchester United 11. And that is the 11 that I have built for you guys. Um, let me know what you think. Obviously, there are some honourable mentions for the likes of Joel Pereira, Ethan Laird, Zidane Iqbal, Lagi Ramazani. 
Deshaun Bernard, Mark Helm, Dylan Hugerworth, Anthony Alanga, Deji Satana. There's a lot of young players coming through at the moment. A lot of talent there in the ranks. But this is the 11 that I've built with players that I feel are probably closer to the first team than some of those. Now, I may be wrong about some of these. Like I said, they need a little, little bit of luck. The right opportunity. Not to have injuries at the wrong times like we've maybe seen with Ethan Laird so far. But they have the talent. They have the potential. Let's see if they can fulfil it at Manchester United. But that is my Manchester United Future eleven guys. Let me know what you're thinking about all that right there. Keep your comments coming in on Adam McCullough TV. Like, comment, share and subscribe. And remember, you can now join too. You get daily live content for free. You get daily content, daily strands for free. But you can also get a little bit more by joining. You help support Adam McCullough TV and help us improve everything here. You get exclusive content on a monthly basis. You get emojis and avatars and all those kind of things that you can use in the chat. We've got an exclusive Discord forum that's going on. And you can get involved there, get your questions in for videos, get your questions in for q and A. Um, when we're doing player interviews you can ask your questions and things like that so if you want to do that click the join button um, or click the link in the description below and join Adam McCola TV for now though guys my voice is well and truly going thank you for watching I've been Adam McCola I'm out of here